Good evening everybody and welcome back to my channel. So today's video is going to be on all of my summer perfumes, spring and summer perfumes. So most of my viewers are in North America, which right now, especially up north, it is winter time, but I do recognize that I have a lot of viewers from around the world and in a lot of places it's always summer and in a lot of places they just started summer. So I thought it would be kind of a fun change of pace to talk about my summer perfumes. If this is your first time here, hi, hello, my name is Alithia, welcome to my channel. On this channel, we talk mostly about fragrance, but we do sometimes discuss a little bit of minimalism, home decor, decluttering, and other things like that. So if that is your vibe, definitely make sure to stick around and hit the subscribe button. Make sure that your notification bell is turned on so you don't miss any of my videos. And without further ado, let's jump right in. Okay guys, so I do have quite a lot of summer perfumes, even though I have way more winter perfumes. Um, so this is actually only about a third of them. I'm going to have to do them in three batches, but I'm going to do them all in one video because I don't know about you guys, but I love long perfume videos. So hopefully that is your thing as well. Um, yeah, so let's just start out going through these first eight or nine perfumes. And something that you will notice about a lot of these perfumes is that many of them are appropriate actually for all year round. And of course you can wear whatever you want whenever you want, but just because I have so many winter perfumes and that is like my preference are those really warm, cozy, deep, dark, rich vanilla. That's like my favorite type of perfume. So I have to put as many in the summer category as possible. Otherwise I would just never get through all of them. Okay. So let's start out in the back and I'm not going to go through all the notes in um, huge detail because that would just make this video ridiculously long, but I'll just kind of tell you the gist of it. So this is Eau de Merveille from Hermes, and this is, as you can see, oh my gosh, how beautiful is that bottle? This is a beautiful, sparkling, um, orangey, woody fragrance. Um, it's a very unique summer fragrance. I don't have anything else quite like it. This is one that my boyfriend actually picked out for me and offered to buy for me. It is the first and only perfume he's ever bought for me, so it is kind of special. And um, I would love to wear this one a little bit more often. It's a unique fragrance. It's a very unique summer fragrance, so it's one that I haven't worn a whole lot. Um, but I absolutely love it. He told me when he first smelt this, he thought it smelt like the inside of an expensive handbag. So yeah, it does kind of smell luxurious and expensive and very ritzy. And um, yeah, it's just a beautiful, beautiful light summer fragrance. And for an eau de toilette, this also lasts a really, really long time. So that is our first one. And the next one is from M. Mikalev, and this is Elaine and Gold. This is such a beautiful bottle. This is um, one of the very few niche fragrances I have in my collection. Um, um, this one was a blind buy and it turned out to be a really good one. This is a vanilla and ylang ylang fragrance, obviously. And a lot of people say that it smells tropical to them. It reminds them of being on a beach. I don't really get tropical vibes from this at all. I don't think there's coconut in here. I could be wrong. There might be coconut. It's just a beautiful bottle. I love how it has the gold flecks. Like if you see, just switch it up, Sam. but look at, there's, um, there's like gold, gold glitter in like this very, very fine gold glitter inside the bottle is just absolutely stunning. And what I get from this is mostly just a very like elevated upscale, beautiful, fancy kind of a vanilla scent. I don't wear this very often because to me, well, for one thing, it's very expensive, but also it has, um, it has a very like fancy vibe. So I think I would wear this out for a date in the summertime. I can't wait to be able to go out and do more things once lockdown is over. <laughs> Um, the next one, let's just go in order, I guess. The next one is from Ely Saab, and this is Girl of Now, the original. This one I actually um, purchased from a duty-free shop a couple of years ago. This is just such a good, easy grab-and-go, no-brainer, dumb reach, one of those perfumes. This is a very sweet, nutty fragrance. And yeah, I have put a little bit of a dent in it, as you can see. And this is one that, even though it's on the verge of being like almost too sweet, especially for the summertime, this one might be a little too sweet. But for me, this still is very much um, a summertime perfume. But you could totally wear this one year round because it is very heavy. The next one is my Kaali Deja Vu White Flower. And this one is actually more of an oriental fragrance. It's not just a straight up white floral fragrance. If you saw my most recent video talking about the Kaali fragrances, I did go over this one a little bit more in depth, but this is a beautiful, glamorous, easy to wear, um, white floral fragrance. And this one again is one that you could actually wear all year round, but I do save it for the summertime because it is most dominant in those white floral notes. 
The next one is my Kenzo World Power. You guys, I absolutely love this one. This is a cypress salt and vanilla, or tonka bean, I should say, fragrance. This one smells actually quite masculine. It has a very strong masculinity about it because of that cypress note. But I always say, and don't laugh at me, but this always reminds me of sexy man at the beach. <laughs> this reminds me of just a really good looking guy on the beach and it's a weird beach because behind him there's like cypress trees. I know, what beach do you know that has cypress trees instead of palm trees? But that's what I get from this. It's just, it's vanilla and it's salty and it's sexy, masculine, lasts for a really, really long time. It's a very unique summer scent and I love this, love, love, love. So that is my Kenzo World Power. Um, this one here, this one I actually have to say thank you to Yana from The Scented. I don't know if you guys have seen Yana's channel, but if you haven't, check her out. I will put a link down below. She talked about this fragrance a couple of times and finally I just had to go buy it. This is a, um, is it backwards? It's backwards. <laughs> okay. This is La Petite Robe Noir Au Fraiche. And this is a gorgeous, kind of a citrusy, fresh, and yet nutty fragrance. There's pistachio in here. I think there's almost al also almond in here. And this one has the original Le Petit Robe Noir DNA, but it also has this freshness to it. And it has these nutty accords. It's a very unique, pretty, soapy, easy grab and go scent. And I haven't worn it because it's just not appropriate for the winter time. It's beautiful for the summertime and the spring. And I cannot wait to wear this. So I have a huge bottle and that doesn't make me sad at all. It's absolutely gorgeous. And the next one is Chanel Chance Eau de Toilette. I'm a huge fan of the Chanel Chance fragrances. If you watch my channel, you probably know that. Um, this one is very similar to the original Chanel Chance, but this one is a little bit brighter, a little bit fruitier, um, a little bit more youthful and fun, and I absolutely love this. This is a very sexy perfume in my opinion, and I absolutely love this one. This is like a go-to, it's a staple for me for the summertime. I'll always have this one in my collection. And I wanted to include this little guy here as well. This is actually just a little sample that I have. It's a little decant from Juliana's Perfume. And this is a sample of Red Carpet Affair. And the reason I wanted to include this one is because I'm actually waiting for a full bottle of this to come. And this is a gorgeous um, fragrance that's supposed to be a dupe for Guerlain's Angelique Noir. And Angelique Noir is a floral fragrance with some vanilla. And it also has this absolutely gorgeous note of Angelica in the opening. I love this so very much. I cannot wait to get my full bottle. One day I would like the real Angelique Noir, but it's very expensive and it's always sold out. It's very, very hard for me to get my hands on. The entire, that entire line from Guerlain is very hard for me to find. Once quarantine's over, I'm gonna go shopping and hopefully get myself, or at least smell some of those bottles up close and personal. But yeah, this one will suffice for now. It's beautiful and I highly, highly recommend this one. Okay, and moving on to our second batch. This is batch two of three. Um, so let's start in the back here. We have Chloe Nomad. This is a beautiful oak mossy fragrance with a little bit of citruses. It also has a really nice light fruity note in the opening, which is from that Mirabelle. This is a gorgeous gorgeous fragrance. I always talk about this. I'm sorry. I know it's a little bit repetitive, um, but this is one that I just cannot wait to wear in the summertime. This one reminds me of shaving cream. It reminds me a little bit of like barbershop vibes. It's got a little hint of a masculinity about it. And it's also got this beautiful, fresh femininity and it's truly beautiful. And it has really good lasting power as well. Another one that I have is Mont Floral. I've heard that this one is discontinued. I really hope it isn't because this has become one of my favorite, favorite perfumes. This is probably my favorite Mont of all of them. I do have three Mont but this one I think is my favorite. And that's because I think this one is the most wearable. It's the most, not wearable, but the most um, versatile. It's so beautiful. This one is this one smells a lot like the original Mont except it has some floral notes. So for me, it's the most appropriate for the summertime. And it's just very feminine and very pretty. And um, yeah, I love it. I could wear this all year round, but I'm specifically saving this one for the summertime so that I have a Mont to wear in the summer. Um, keeping with that same theme, we have Mont the original. So this one, of course, is actually a little bit heavier. It's a lavender vanilla fragrance, and this one you could wear, again, all year round. I just put it in my summertime collection because I have Mont Intense, and I keep that one for winter. So this one is more like my spring-fall, I guess. 
and um, yeah then the Mongerlan floral will be for the summertime but this is gorgeous this is a staple again this is one that you can again wear all year round anytime any place it's just beautiful um, definitely on my top 10 for life then in the back we have Erin Hibiscus Palm and this is a beautiful tropical palm leaf fragrance. I think there's coconut in here, I'm not 100% sure, but this is just a very luxurious, bougie smelling tropical fragrance. It's not like your typical sunscreen fragrance. There's also hibiscus flowers in here of course. There's also that palm leaf, so there is like a slight bit of a greenness to it as well. Out of all of my um, tropical fragrances, this one lasts longer than any of them. This one beats out all of my sunscreeny type of fragrances and this one truly transports me to the beach. It makes me feel like I am at a ritzy hotel, super glamorous, high-end ritzy hotel resort on vacation. Um, I actually purchased this one when I was in Las Vegas a couple of years ago and it was one of the very first niche fragrances I ever purchased and I love it. So beautiful. Also the bottle is really classy and beautiful as well. So next let's talk about Chloe Absolute Parfum. Look how beautiful this bottle is. I absolutely love this fragrance. This is a rose, patchouli, and vanilla scent. It smells very soapy, very clean, um, very feminine, very classic. It's just one of the prettiest, most feminine fragrances I have in my collection. And this one screams summertime to me. This is a summertime spring perfume for sure. You could probably wear it year round if you wanted a signature scent, but I really like it for the summertime. It smells like an expensive spa soap. It's just beautiful. Um, the next one is Olympia, the original. I had the Olympia Intense and I actually recently decluttered it. If you saw my latest New Year's declutter, you would have seen that because I just prefer this one. This one has more pizzazz, it has more personality, it has um, a stronger salt note, which is what I really love about it. And it also has a little bit of, I think, ginger in the opening. So it's got like this freshness and this like, um, kind of this kick in the opening that the Intense one didn't have. I like both of them, but I just, really really prefer this one this is also one of my like top 10 for life i love this perfume so much next we have coco mademoiselle from chanel and this is another one that again you could probably wear year round if you wanted to i just keep it in my spring summer collection because this one is a little bit soapy it's very clean it has a little bit of a freshness to it and it just smells like a sophisticated clean everyday scent but i do think this one is better for the warmer weather versus the hot weather um Again, you do you. You could wear this any time of year if you wanted to. This is beautiful, obviously. it's um, Most people seem to really like this. I've seen a handful of people who don't love this one, but for me, this is a staple. It's just super sophisticated and classy and clean, and it's great for the summertime. And the last one out of this batch is Alien Eau de Toilette, or sorry, Alien Eau de Parfum. And this one, again, is one that you can wear year round. I do wear this one year round. I have one in my wintertime collection and I have one little bottle in my summertime collection. This one is a very bold, amber, woody, um, jasmine fragrance, but I also do like wearing this in the summertime. I have worn this in the summertime on a hot day with a summer dress. I just went a little bit lighter on the nozzle and it worked beautifully. I loved it. So yeah, this is one of my favorites. I shouldn't say it's one of my favorites. This is my favorite fragrance of all time. <laughs> okay, and moving on to batch three. So again, there's a couple in here that are like year round scents, but I push them into my summer category because I just have so many winter fragrances. So we'll start in the back here. I never talk about this one anymore. This is Le Vie Belle Eclat, and this is a flanker of the original Le Vie Belle, obviously. Um, this one I like more for the summertime because even though it is quite sweet, it does have some more, um, some floral notes in it and so this one to me leans a little bit more summertime and it, I think it also has a little bit of a citrusy opening so this one does have a fresher kind of feel to it than the original La Via Belle. This one isn't as powdery as the original La Via Belle it's just a little bit more floral, bright, sexy um, and I think good for like warmer weather so I do really like this one you can tell I've put a pretty good dent in it. I also really like layering this one with Mongerlan. When you wear this one with Mongerlan, you get this gorgeous, bright, sweet, 
amazing scent that lasts forever. Both of them last forever anyway, but when you combine them, it's a monster. So if you have Monger Lawn and this one, I highly suggest trying to layer them together one day and see what you think. So that is my Livia Belle Clat. I love that one. Beside that one, we have Kaali Citrus 08. This one I've talked about a lot lately, so I'm not gonna talk about it too much right now, but this is basically a rose grapefruit oak moss scent. It's kind of similar to Chloe Nomad. It's kind of in that same family, and I just find it to be really uplifting and classy and pretty, and it's I just cannot wait to wear this in the spring and summer. I'm gonna douse myself in it. It doesn't have great lasting power. That's my only complaint. I only get about three hours out of this, so really, really nice not good um, performance that's the only issue I have had worse though but yeah I just wish the lasting power was a little bit better but it's not terrible beside the Livia Belle Clat, we have Guerlain Terracotta Le Parfum I absolutely love this one apparently this is really hard to get in the States it's very easy to find in Canada you can get a hundred ml bottle for less than a hundred Canadian dollars so it's actually pretty affordable and this is a beautiful beachy scent this has like a richness to it and a luxuriousness to it and I think there's coconut in here and there's TR flower. It's kind of like bronze goddess and kind of like hibiscus palm. It's along those same kind of veins but this one to me just smells super rich and creamy and luxe and it has that TR flower in there which makes it um, very sophisticated and feminine. It's not like overly beachy. It's not, it does smell like a summertime beach fragrance but it's not overly sunscreeny if you know what I mean. Mm, I love this so much you guys. Um, this smells apparently a lot like the terracotta bronzing powder from Guerlain which I haven't actually smelled but it does have a bit of that makeup vibe which I love and I cannot wait to wear this in the summertime. This would be a great vacation scent. It would be a great scent to wear going for brunch someplace tropical in a nice summer dress. And in front of that one, I have another Kali. This one really isn't a summer perfume. This is Kali Musk. I just put it in here because even though it's not really a summer perfume, it's not bold enough to wear in the winter. It just doesn't have um, a very big presence. It's beautiful, but I tend to use this one more for layering purposes than anything else or to wear it to bed or just when I get out of the shower or something like that because it's just not a very strong perfume. So this is actually a really pretty musk lotus flower and vanilla fragrance and you can wear this any time of year. Um, yeah, I kind of just use it for layering purposes, like I said. In the middle, we have Estee Lauder Bronze Goddess. This is a beautiful, again, kind of a beachy fragrance. It doesn't have any like strong floral notes. This one is more about the vanilla, sandalwood, coconut, kind of creamy, um, truly beachy scent. This one literally reminds me of being on a beach, wearing a pair of tortoiseshell sandals, and my body's covered in oil and I'm soaking up the rays, which by the way, I don't ever do that. I literally slather myself in sunscreen and avoid the sun when I'm on vacation, but if I was gonna lay out in the sun and get a tan, that's what this reminds me of. Um, and it's, I have to smell it again, actually. I miss my summer perfume so much, you guys. Mm, it's so good, you guys. It's so nice. It doesn't have huge, huge lasting power or huge performance, um, but the bottle is also really beautiful. I just absolutely love the bottle and it's just a creamy, beachy scent that I love. So that is Bronze Goddess. Um, okay, so this one here is Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum, just the original one. And this one again is one that you could wear year round, but because like I say, I do have so many sweet, heavy perfumes. I kind of leave this one for the summertime. This does have a bit of a freshness to it though. I think there's pink pepper, patchouli, iris, vanilla maybe. I'm not even sure what all's in here, but it kind of is all seasons, but I do prefer to wear this one in the summertime because it does have a sophisticated, feminine, floral kind of a quality about it with that clean patchouli in there. And yeah, I just love it. This is my favorite, favorite Chanel fragrance ever, ever, ever. Chanel Chance Eau de Parfum. Um, yeah, so I actually wore this. I actually wore this quite a lot in the summertime. You can see there's a good chunk missing. That's considered a good chunk for me, by the way, <laughs> because I have so many perfumes. Um, we have another Chanel one. This is Chanel Chance um, Eau Fraiche, and this is the only truly citrusy perfume I have in my collection. I have other perfumes that have citruses in them, but this is the one that's like predominantly citrus. And that's because I don't usually like citrus fragrances at all. 
like Dolce and Gabbana light blue. I like it, but it gives me a headache. It's just not my favorite scent profile. I just prefer my sweeter floral fragrances. Um, but this one I really, really like because it has that citrusy opening, but it also has that classic Chanel sophisticated DNA about it. You can tell that it's a Chanel fragrance. It's not just some random citrusy scent. And yeah, I do love this one. It has a fresh sexiness about it. It kind of reminds me of like Aqua de Gio for men, but this is like the sexy female version kind of. So I really like that one. And then we have lastly, my Miss Dior Eau de Parfum. Again, this one is one that you could totally wear year round. It is a little bit sweet and it's a little heavier, but it is mostly a orange and floral fragrance with some patchouli. And it does have a sweetness to it, like I said, but I really like this one for summertime. This is like my go-to for summertime daytime when I just wanna smell really well put together and sophisticated and classy and chic and, um, this is also, I think I've told you guys, my favorite, all-time favorite daytime scent for women. It's just, it's just undeniably classy. It's beautiful, it's pretty, it has a sexiness to it, it's feminine, it's gorgeous. I love it. So this is, again, another top 10 for life. It's one that I will always, always have. And that concludes our third batch. So that's it for today's video, you guys. I hope that you enjoyed seeing all of my spring and summer perfumes. If you would be so kind as to take a moment and let me know down below what your favorite spring and summer fragrances are, I would love to know. I'm always looking for another great fragrance to add to my collection. And if you haven't already, feel free to head on over and follow me on Instagram, where I share a lot of little tidbits of my life that I don't usually share here on YouTube. And I will see you guys all very soon. Bye for now.